on episode 458 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Miles Spar and answer the question, what are peptides and what can they do for you? You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 458. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Are you struggling to get results from your exercise and diet, spinning your wheels, or maybe you just really don't know where to start, but you want to start? The pandemic has made it clear we can't afford to not do something to improve our health. In fact, a recent study showed that obese people spend over $1,400 more per year on medical care and prescriptions. I'm here to help. I've helped hundreds of people over 40 lose weight and get more fit with 40 Plus Fitness online personal training. And now it's your turn. When you're over 40, you need to train smart and eat smart if you want to shed the weight and get stronger. Through the monthly group coaching call, the monthly one-on-one coaching call, and the 40 Plus Fitness app, I'll guide you step-by-step step so you get results fast and learn how to keep it off. I'm so confident in 40 Plus Fitness online personal training that I offer a 40-day money-back guarantee. You won't find another personal trainer or wellness coach that does that. I take all the risk because I know I can help you. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash start and get started today. That's 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash start. In honor of Veterans Day, I'm offering a 20% discount on 40 Plus Fitness group training to all veterans with the coupon code VETERAN. This offer will be valid into the end of November. 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash start. Rachel, how are you doing? Great, Alan. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, you know, we're what a lot of people might not know about the behind the scenes part of a podcast. We record these intros and this discussion sometimes uh, a week or two or sometimes three um, ahead of when an actual episode airs. Uh, and so in this case, we're recording a few weeks ahead because I'm planning a trip to the United States to see family, get my crap out of uh, my daughter's garage, and then, of course, to vote. And so I'm pretty excited about that. I, you know, as we got into COVID, I was a little concerned, you know, my, my mother and her mother are not in the best of health uh, and my stepmother isn't either. So, you know, with this thing and, and all the, the ramifications of being an at-risk person, you know, it's one of those things you're thinking about on a pretty regular basis when you're sitting around in your apartment with nothing else to do, which is why I go, go back and listen to that slip to success uh, episode, because that's really where my head was, is that I might not see our parents again. So it's a little, little daunting, but I'm, I'm happy to be going back, uh, get my stuff out of my daughter's garage and ship some of it down here. We started pricing that out and it's, uh, you have to, in your head, justify, do I really want to pay that much to ship that thing, to have it down here? Uh, and I th- I'm hopeful the answer for a lot of that is no, but um, you know how things go when you're trying to get rid of things that you own, you end up toting them with you. Oh, for sure. Well, I'm glad you get to come up and visit your uh, family. That sounds wonderful. Well, how are things going for you? Oh, good, good. The weather's been great. It's um, been great for running in the mornings. And we just got a new weight set for our gym. So I'm excited to unwrap everything and, and get to it. Okay. Tell us about that. We um, bought an Olympic bar and a full set of weights. So we've got everything from 45 down to two and a half. And um, just excited to get it all out. It took about six or eight weeks, I think, to get here. So we've been anxiously <laughs> waiting. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a little much, but yeah, we we can't wait to get it unwrapped. Well, that's that's one of the things is you know when COVID came along and people wanted to start training at home, they're like, well, yes. I, I could outfit a home gym, and but you got to start you know figuring out the equipment, and then you go to buy the equipment. Well, you're not the only one. And so a lot of these places stocked out. I was looking at a Concept 2 roller because uh, back in in June, I didn't necessarily want to wait all the way until like January when I could go back Mm -hmm. and get, because I have a little rower. It's not a Concept 2, but I was thinking I'll just buy a Concept 2 and ship that down here and then I'll sell my rower up there. 
Uh, but I, they, they had a waiting list and I was like, well, okay, I'll just, if I'm, if I have a waiting list, I may as well wait, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was a shame. So, but that good, good, good. I'm, you have to let us know how it goes. For sure. Absolutely. Post some pictures on Facebook. Absolutely. All right. So one more thing I do have to let you know, we're, um, we're as I said, we're recording this. I interviewed Dr. Spar on peptides. Uh, and just for full disclosure, uh, Vault Health, which is the company that Dr. Spar founded and works for, uh, is a sponsor of the show. So uh, if you do visit uh, Vault Health, I do want you to know that we get a little bit of a, a kickback on that. If you schedule your call and get on your call, uh, they do they do pay us for that referral. Uh, but it doesn't cost you any more. And I'm not telling you that's who you need to go to or that you even need to do peptides. But I wanted to have an episode out there because so many people will start hearing about this and it, it sounds really magical and it sounds really cool, uh, but there's some pitfalls. So how about we go ahead and get into the episode and Rachel and I will be right back with you afterwards. Our guest today currently serves as Vault Health's chief medical officer. He was previously the director of integrative internal medicine at Southern California's men's medical group. As a national leader in men's health, Dr. Spar is also the founder of his own digital health platform designed to help men reach their optimal health and goals. He's also a clinical faculty both at the University of California, Los Angeles, and the University of Arizona Schools of Medicine. Vault Health is a sponsor of the podcast, so recognize we are talking to a sponsor, and any links that you find on the website Uh, will lead you to an affiliate link uh, associated with the podcast. But with no further ado, here's Dr. Miles Spar. Dr. Spar, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Thanks, Alan. Great to be here. You know, today we're going to talk about peptides. And I, you know, as I kind of follow the health and fitness space, I I tend to put one foot out there in uh, the area I call biohacking, just to kind of know maybe what's going to be coming down the line five years, 10 years down the line, uh, but that, that curve <laughs> is, is accelerating. Uh, right. You know, you used to hear uh, about something and say, okay, uh, when is that going to hit mainstream? And it would be, a, it'd be a, a generation later, like with some medications. And then, you know, you'd hear about this new thing bodybuilders were doing and it would be mainstream, you know, maybe five years later. And now I can listen to a podcast like Ben Greenfield or Dave Asprey. And they they were talking about SARMs a year ago, two years ago, or three years ago. And it was happening then. And then now right, peptides, right. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the things that we're calling biohacking are actually coming so fast and getting mainstream so quickly with technology we have and the communications we have. It's, it's really kind of amazing what's happening right now. It is. It's exciting and, and a little bit overwhelming. So I love that you have the podcast because it's really hard to separate the wheat from the chaff and to know what's legit, what isn't, what's safe, what isn't, and what's proven. And like you said, it's good when things move fast, but it also means sometimes we don't have all the data um, yet. So it's great to kind of talk about, well, what do we know and what do we not know that you need to watch out for? Yeah. And, and even in 2020, we still have snake oil salesmen Absolutely. <laughs> they come to town yes. and try to sell us something that yes. isn't going to help us at all. Yes, um, especially on fitness. That's a big one. That's it probably is, one it of is. the number ones where you get questionable recommendations and products. Because because we're eager to do something and we, and right. everybody likes that, you know, that that easy button uh yes. concept of what's what's the one thing I can do? Uh, and I, I'd love to say, yeah, say maybe one day science will figure that out, uh, but we, we don't quite have it. But peptides are really, really interesting to me because you're literally going in and, and the way I understand it, and just correct me if I'm saying this wrong, but sure. you can think of your genetic code as like an operating system for our body. And in general, mm-hmm. it's going to function and do certain things. Yet we can introduce things like peptides in there, which then basically turns on and off or dimmer switch, however you want to kind of look at it in your head, the, the way that our genetic code is working and yeah. cause our body to do things good or bad. I mean, but most of what we're going to try to do here is some good. Yeah. I think that's a good way of putting it actually, because, you know, peptides, basically they're, they're signaling molecules, right? So they're different from exogenous hormones or hormones you take, you know, separately even though it's confusing because some peptides are hormones, but in general, when we think about hormones, we think of 
instead of relying on the body to produce something like testosterone, we're going to give testosterone because the body isn't producing enough or for whatever reason, or even using growth hormone, which we'll talk about later, just taking extra growth hormone. And that's a little more of a big hammer, right? Because you're just basically saying, yeah, we're not signaling the genetic code. Like you said, we're just basically saying, yeah, whatever you genes turn off. We got this. Peptides are a little more elegant. They rely on the body's own natural rhythms and their natural processes of when they're going to produce something like a hormone. And yet it helps to coax them to maybe do that at a little higher volume. Just like you said, I love that the dimmer switch. It's a great way of, of putting it. This episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is sponsored by Himalaya Ashwagandha. Before being laid off from my corporate job and our move to Panama, my stress levels were off the charts. During that time, I interviewed several experts on stress management, and that's when I learned about ashwagandha. I used it to protect my body and mind from stress and anxiety. Even though my stress level is much lower today, I use Himalaya ashwagandha to help me navigate the crazy times we're all living through. What is ashwagandha? The simple answer is ashwagandha is an herb. In ancient times, ashwagandha was considered the king of Ayurvedic herbs, and it was used for a wide variety of conditions. In functional medicine today, we harness the power of ashwagandha primarily to help our bodies adapt to the stress of modern day life so we can feel calm and balanced. Himalaya ashwagandha is organic, non-GMO, contains no binders or fillers, and is clinically validated for safety and efficacy. Stress less and find calm with Himalaya ashwagandha. As a 40 Plus Fitness Podcast listener, you'll get 20% off your first purchase on Amazon with the discount code 40PLUSFIT. That's 40PLUSFIT. Go to 40PLUSFITNESSPODCAST.com forward slash adapt, and you'll be forwarded to Himalaya Ashwagandha on Amazon. And be sure to use that discount code 40PLUSFIT to get 20% off. Now, I remember reading about SARMs a few years ago and thinking, okay, this is kind of interesting, cutting edge stuff, but you, you had to basically, you, if you went and looked online for what SARMs were, uh, they'd say, yeah, we'll sell you this, but it's not for human consumption. You know, and you're like, well, why are you selling it to someone that's not a scientist? Uh, but they were. What's the difference between SARMs and peptides? Sure. They're actually, they're actually really different. So peptides are, are chains of amino acids. You know, we know proteins, which are what most enzymes and a lot of hormones and a lot of substances in the bodies are, are large chains of amino acids, but peptides are smaller chains of about 50 amino acids or less. And like I said, they're signaling molecules. So they're naturally produced in the body. And that's a key thing because SARMs are synthetic. Okay. So peptides are all naturally produced in the body. There's about 7,000 that are naturally produced. And some of them are also so made available to use as well to, to give yourself um, or to take. And about 60 are actually approved by the FDA. Um, and these have the same type of impacts as hormones in that whatever their direct thing that they are coaxing along will cause that thing they're coaxing along to have a broader impact. So the peptides themselves are very elegant. They're very specific to like one hormone or one chain in a pathway that they will stimulate, but it's really only that one thing that they'll stimulate. So for example, we'll talk later about peptides that stimulate growth hormone release. And that's really all they do. They don't have other actions. And then they rely on the impact of growth hormone to have a bunch of actions. An example of peptides that many people might've heard of are these GLP-1 agonists for diabetes, like Victoza or semaglutide or Ozempic. These are newer medications for diabetes that help with weight loss that are great. Um, and they really only work on this glucagon-like peptide that they stimulate the release of, and that then helps a lot with insulin sensitivity. Whereas SARMs, they're actually synthetic. They're small molecules like peptides. It's really the only thing that's the same. And the reason that they're selective, there's, you know, they, we used to have SERMs, a selective estrogen receptor modulators. The SARMs are selective androgen receptors. So, you know, the SERMs are things like tamoxifen and related estrogens. These are ones that are related to androgens, but they're selective in that hormones like androgens are hormones by definition means a hormone has impacts all over the body right? So that's what defines a hormone. When you learn in med school, a hormone basically is something that goes all everywhere to every kind of tissue. So SARMs say, well, we don't really want to have 
impact all over the body for certain things. If we're really trying to build muscle, we want something to be androgenic in muscle, but we don't want it to affect the liver and the kidney and the testes and shut down testicle production of testosterone. We want it just to really focus on building muscle or maybe also fat to lose some fat. So that's what SARMs are meant to do. They're actually broader molecules that look a lot like bigger hormones, but they're designed to specifically have less widespread impact than a whole than a whole uh, hormone or whole steroid would be. Okay. You know, it, it was interesting because, you know, when I was first reading about SARMs, I think, you know, the, the broad interest in this was how do I, how do I gain muscle? How do I lose fat? Uh, right. How to get more growth hormone, which, you know, also helps improve both of those. It was interesting to find out that there are peptides that can actually improve our immune function, which I think, you yes. know, in the time of COVID, uh, that's huge. Can you talk a little bit about that uh, peptide or those that class of peptides and and what they do? Yeah, absolutely. That's a big interest right now, and there um, there's some really good studies on some of these peptides helping the immune system. You know, I don't want to say that these are cures for COVID, that these are anything that really we can make specific claims related to COVID about because there haven't been studies around COVID. However, there are some good studies on some of these with virus in general and helping boost the immune system as it protects us from viruses. So the main ones are ones that are initially produced from the thymus gland. We all have a thymus gland, but it involutes as we age. And that thymus gland is what really produces a lot of our immune system cells. Our T cells are named after our thymus gland. And those are the, some of the most important cells in our immune system. Um, and they also help not only just produce these T cells, but they help tell the T cells how to operate and how to do what they do best. And yet over time, that thymus gland, like I said, involutes and so it gets less active. So these peptides, especially one called thymosin alpha one, and you'll see it abbreviated TA one really is something that naturally is produced in the thymus gland, but it's produced less and less as we age. So when you're over 40, you have less of it yet. It's very helpful to boost this type of immunity called cell mediated immunity. These T cells immunity that are really the most important arm of our immune system against viruses. We have like the antibody arm, which are great for bacteria and help a little bit with viruses. And that's what vaccines help with. But really for viruses, we really need this thymus, this T cell arm, the cell mediated immunity arm. And that's what thymus and alpha one helps helps boost production of these T cells. It helps them mature better. It helps teach them what to go against and what not to. So they're actually used in autoimmune diseases because it helps teach the immune system. This thymus and alpha one does teaches the immune system. What's something that really we want to attack and what's our own self that we don't want to attack. And that's an autoimmune disease, right? When you're attacking yourself. So they're used in viruses and autoimmunity and allergies. And then they also help even with chronic infections like Lyme is a big one, um, or chronic fatigue syndrome that is unclear. Is it Epstein-Barr, which is another virus, or Lyme? So thymus and alpha-1 is the main one that we see very well studied. It's actually used in as a pharmaceutical. It's approved in over 70 countries around the world, so it's not way out there. It doesn't happen to be FDA approved in this country for a lot of things, but it's, it's a very safe peptide to use. Um, the other one you hear about less so, but um, to some degree is called Thymosin beta four. So I mentioned thymosin alpha one, and this one's thymosin beta four. That also has some immune modulating activities, but that's more around cancer care that's used. And so I would really say for listeners that are interested in boosting immunity in a really um, sophisticated way, the thymosin alpha one is the way to go. Okay. Now, an, another area which I found kind of interesting, and uh, as I was reading the story on this, and the guy just sort of accidentally. Uh, somewhat overdosed, I guess he, he got, he shot himself up some, some peptides and he, uh, found himself in a position, um, of, uh, excitement for about eight hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so there are actually peptides that can improve your libido. Could you, could you talk right. about them? Yeah, this is really exciting. And it's, it's something that, like you said, it was found accidentally. It acts so it's interesting. One of the hormones that leads to Melatan leads to melanin in your skin and helps to promote skin pigment actually is a precursor to ACTH, which is a hormone that many of your listeners might know about comes from the, you know, hypothalamus pituitary gland. Um, that can produce this hormone that produces skin darkening, but it also the precursor to that hormone that produces skin darkening is called melanotan. And that also actually helps with libido and erectile function. 
um, from a centrally acting way. So from a nerve stimulating erections, as opposed to like Viagra and the PDE5 inhibitors, those all help promote vascular flow, right? So they help with the blood vessel part of erections. These help with the central nervous system being turned on. So it's all a nerve part of not just erections, but libido. And in fact, when they study this and they found the form that doesn't cause as much skin darkening, because the first form just causes a lot of skin darkening (laughs) and the libido, which isn't really helpful unless you really want to have really, really, really dark skin. So they found this, basically it's a melanotan two. um, And they found this substance called PT-141 or bremelanotide, which is a derivative of melanotan 2 and works the same way and stimulates this libido very strongly. They actually have it as an FDA-approved medication for women with hypoactive sexual desire, especially post-menopause, because it works in men and women because it's working in the brain. It's not working in the penis. It's working in the brain on getting you turned on, and that helps libido and it helps with erections. And especially helpful, though, off-label, so to speak, for guys who have maybe tried Viagra PD-5 inhibitors and they're still not getting good erections because they're just not into it. And it's more of a mojo thing than just a blood flow thing. So these are very powerful at getting you turned on. You inject them or you do an intranasal, you know, an hour or so before sex. And like I said, it's an FDA approved drug for women. For men, we use it as well. You know, it, it has some side effects to watch for. It can cause a little bit of nausea that's usually fleeting and some flushing. And you, it's not recommended for guys with really high blood pressure, but other than that, it's really well tolerated and it works wonders in guys who are really frustrated because they've tried, you know, ordering Viagra online and they're still like, yeah, whatever. I don't even want to take it because I'm just not into it. Or I take it and I still don't really get an erection because I'm just my, I'm not into it. And this, this is, you know, works at that, at that central nervous system level. Okay, cool. This episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is sponsored by Best Self. I'm sure you've heard me extolling the value of journaling. Beyond the value of expressing gratitude and checking in with yourself, journaling is the best way to get more things done. If improving your health and fitness is important to you, you need the Self Journal by Best Self. This 13-week goal planner, backed by science and success psychology, is designed to optimize your day, tackle your goals, and live a more fulfilled life. The Self Journal will help you set, plan, and track progress toward your biggest goals, be more productive, overcome decision fatigue, and focus on what matters most, and prioritize your workload, build good habits, and make every day count. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash best self and use the discount code 40 plus four zero P L U S for 20% off site wide. And while you're there, check out all the other great products they have. Your discount code 40 plus is good for 20% site wide. 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash best self. Now, I guess, you know, and of course, uh, this is going to be the exciting one, is that uh, there are quite a few peptides that can actually increase our growth hormone, which, um, you know, again, is another one of those hormones that declines as we age. Yeah. Yeah. And growth hormone, you know, I'm sure your listeners know growth hormone. I mean, it's kind of like the fountain of youth (laughs) in a way, because it really does. Growth hormone is really responsible for muscle growth and fat loss. Um, and helping us feel more energetic, helping us sleep better, helping us with brain cognition. Um, and it does decline as you age. Um, it's also impacted by lifestyle factors. So things that help boost your own production of growth hormone, like getting enough sleep and intermittent fasting are really helpful. You produce most of it at night when you sleep. So if you eat a lot of food close to bed, you're going to blunt your production of growth hormone. If you don't get enough sleep, you're going to blunt your production of growth hormone. So anything you do First has to be on this foundation of watching, not eating a lot, ideally thinking you might intermittent fasting and making sure you're getting enough sleep and managing stress because all that impacts it. But even with all that, some guys get frustrated that, yeah, God, I'm doing the same workout I've been doing, but now I'm making less gains or I'm losing muscle mass and they get testosterone checked and it's fine. So then they think about growth hormone. The problem is I've never really advocated using growth hormone itself because like I kind of said at the beginning of the show, it's not very elegant to just take over production of growth hormone and give your body a big boost of it because the way it works is in this pulsatile fashion. It works best when it's produced a lot at night. And then that's when your body's say recovering from a workout and responding to that workout by building up 
bigger muscle cells and building up muscle and hypertrophying the muscle. That's how you get bigger muscle. Um, and then it goes down as the day goes during the day and comes up at various times in the day. And you want that normal circadian rhythm of production. If you just give yourself HGH, human growth hormone, it kind of takes over that. And it actually then makes the growth hormone work less well over time because the body gets kind of sensitized to it. So that's where peptides are much more elegant because all they do, the peptides that help stimulate growth hormones own natural production get their effect by relying on that same natural pulsatile flow. So giving peptides that produce a little more growth hormone from the own body relies on the own body's natural production and doesn't make the body get sensitized to it, doesn't destroy that normal circadian rhythm. Um, and it also doesn't come with some of the risks that we worry about of constantly adding growth hormone, like a concern about cancer risk or blood sugar being too high. So there, these are are really helpful and safe ways to boost your own body's natural production of growth hormone. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the more I read into hormones, the more I, I actually realize I'm never going to fully understand uh, the whole endocrine system and, and how right. it works. Cause it's just, right. I mean, of course there's, there's entire professions, entire doctors that just focus on endocrine. So yeah, it, yeah. it would make sense that it's not something I'm going to just pick up from, from reading a few books and articles, but um, no, 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 you have to go to the doctor for <laughs> yeah. sure. And, and, and well, I was just going to go in the weeds a little more in the growth hormone okay. part um, about some specifics so listeners can really know what to ask for. And again, this is all things you do through your medical practitioner. Um, um, you can certainly do it with us at Vault Health or someone else, but don't do this on your own. But so it does get a little complicated with growth hormone. So the way it works is this. Your body right, stimulates its own production of growth hormone from the pituitary gland. However, um, the peptides that help release that if you just take a peptide that is called a growth hormone releasing hormone that just tells the body make more growth hormone. And the examples of that are like sermorolin people might've heard of, or tessamorolin, which is also, which is actually a pharmaceutical called agrifta to prove for HIV lipodystrophy and, and, or something called CJC 1295, which is the newest generation. Those are great. And they actually do help and they can help with decreasing fat and increasing muscle and energy and even cognition. However, the body will naturally see, oh, wait, we're stimulating too much growth hormone. We're going to put a break on that. And the brain will make something called somatostatin, which basically statin is stopping kind of and somato is body. So it's like, stop this bodybuilding hormone because we don't want a lot of growth hormone all the time. So you have, so it stops the release of that extra growth hormone that was produced. So you want to also take something that helps overcome a little bit of that somatostatin so that what extra growth hormone was produced actually gets released. So that's another category of these growth, growth hormone peptides. Um, and the main one's called ipamorelin. I-P-A-M-O-R-E-L-I-N. So you couple that with like the CJC-1295 so that the CJC-1295 coaxes the body again. It's a signaling molecule. Make a little more growth hormone when it's appropriate to make growth hormone. And then the ipamorelin says, yeah, you somatostatin trying to stop the release of that, chill out, let's release some of this. And it together works really well at helping make sure you produce a little more and you release it at the appropriate time. And yeah. And so once you start getting to stacks and things like that, you know, it, it turns me back around to, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to fine tune a, a human genome. Uh, we're trying to, you know, <laughs> get, get, get some improvement, uh, some optimization out of our, out of our aging as we go. Um, right. But this, there, there are side effects, as you mentioned, uh, the one for libido, it caused some skin darkening, uh, there are some some things you have to consider. This yes. is something. This isn't a do-it-yourself at home chemistry experiment. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of them. They all have their own because these are really elegant molecules, and so they all have very specific effects. Like I said, different from you know bigger molecules or bigger proteins, they all have an effect on kind of one pathway. They all have different side effects, and so it's really important to talk to your practitioner about well, with this specific peptide that we're talking about. What are the potential side effects? So. Like some of the growth hormone ones, you can get a little water retention. Um, you can even get a little like numbness or tingling in your arms. And usually if you decrease the dose, that goes away. But we used to see that um, in, in higher doses people were using, like a, almost like a carpal tunnel syndrome. For most people, they help with sleep. But for some people, 
it causes them sleeplessness because it gets them kind of revved up. So that just, we usually say, well, use it a couple hours earlier, you know, and that can help with that. Um, the ones that um, also for growth hormone can raise your blood sugar a little bit. So that's something to watch for, not to the point of creating diabetes, but if you already have high blood sugar, it's something to watch for. Um, and then, like I said, the ones for libido, the bromelanotide can cause a little nausea in a lot of people, but it's very short acting and it's not to the point of vomiting. It's just like a flushing kind of wave. And, but it can also cause some swelling as well. So yeah, they each have their own set of side effects. The big one is, like I said, high blood pressure with bromelanotide to watch for, and then the darkening with that. But in general, they're really well tolerated. They're very safe. They're not causing side effects you don't aren't aware of because they're so small and elegant and targeted that they're they're not causing liver damage and kidney damage like can happen if you start using even some SARMs that aren't so safe uh, that are synthetic or some, you know, growth hormone itself or some of these other bigger, uh, more wide ranging effect type molecules. Dr. Spar, I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? So I have a really hard time narrowing down to three. So I might <laughs> cheat and add, add, but I'll tell you the first one and I did a TEDx talk about this. It sounds really, really woo-woo, but it's really the most important is the first tactic to being fit is why do you want to be fit? You know, the first tactic to being healthy is what do you want your health for? Because as soon as there's a donut available, when you had said, I'm not going to eat donuts, unless you're clear why you committed not having donuts and being more healthy and fit, you're going to eat that donut. You know, you need to really be clear on I want to be healthier for my kids to be a role model, or I want to be a better partner and feel more sexy. And for me to feel more sexy, I need to have a, a little bit better physique, or I want to feel stronger so I can beat people on the basketball court. Whatever it is, why is it that you want to be fit and healthy? You need to literally sit down and think about it. It doesn't take that long, but studies show people who have a clear sense of why they're doing something are much more likely to do it. So that's number one. The second, I would say, you know, we hear a lot about diet and exercise, and those are important. So I'm not even going to include those since we all know that. I'd say stress and sleep are the other two. Um, and I worked with NBA basketball players as like an integrative medicine consultant. And those were the two biggest issues for them. And these are obviously very high level fit guys. And they would find what would undermine their fitness was if they weren't managing stress. So we talked a lot about apps that you can download like Headspace or Calm or other ones to help manage stress or journaling or doing some kind of meditation or prayer, even something that helps you every day, even if it's five or 10 minutes, tell your body, I'm not in fight or flight mode. Because if you're trying to be fit, fight or flight mode tells your body, uh-oh, no, no blood to the muscles. We need to, we need to be supporting, responding, we're, and we're going to store up sugar as fat because we're in crisis. So we're not going to be making sure that we're lean. We're making sure that we're just able to respond and not manage our immune system and our digestion. So managing stress is key. And then sleep is a huge issue for guys, especially um, where they think, oh yeah, I can get away with five, six hours a night. And really about 5% of the population can deal with less than seven hours a night on average, 95% really need seven to nine hours to not tell the body we need to be in crisis mode and we need to store more fat and, and you're just not going to be as healthy and, and you're going to have early cognitive changes. So I would say identify why you want to be healthy or fit, manage your stress and make sure you're getting good quality sleep. Perfect. Love those. Thank you. Now, uh, you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash vault, and uh, Dr. Spar or one of his uh, doc, fellow doctors there will have a free consult to talk to you about peptides and some of the other opportunities. Uh, do you want to kind of go a little bit into what that call is about and how they work? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we created Vault Health because we felt there needs to be men's health specialists that are more available. Women have gynecologists, which is great and very needed, but guys haven't had like somebody who gets guys. So a lot of guys don't have anywhere to go when they say, I just want to perform better. I want to be more fit. I don't want to just be not broken. They go to their regular doctor and they get an annual physical to make sure they're not broken. But usually that doctor isn't really looking further to how can I perform better? How can I really make sure that I am not feeling my age as much as I do? Um, and that's what we're all about. So we are a national network of mental health specialists that really get guys who are 
trying to achieve goals that better, we, we break down performance into physical performance, sexual performance, and cognitive performance, because those are the three areas we really see guys wanting help with. And then we find out what is it that you want help with. Let's look and see, do we need to do any blood work to look further? Or have you already had blood work done and then you don't need it? And then is it hormone therapy, like testosterone or peptide therapy, like a lot of the ones we've talked about? We have other ones we didn't even mention that help with brain health. Or are there other things to help with energy, to help with sexual function, libido? So we really offer a suite of solutions that are personalized to what that guy really wants. But it all starts with that telehealth visit with a men's health specialist. All right. So you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash vault if you want to learn more about vault. Uh, And if you want to get to the show notes for this episode, uh, they're at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 458. So Dr. Um, Spar, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Thank you, Alan. It was great. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rachel, welcome back. Yeah. How are you doing, Alan? Good, good. I, I'm really glad I had that opportunity to have the doc, that conversation with Dr. Spar because, um, you know, I've always said on here, I, I don't like the term biohacking um, because most of the biohackers that you'll, you'll hear out there, and I'm not going to name names, but the ones that are on that cutting edge, um, a lot of them are trying this stuff on their own before they really know what it is. And you know, we can look back at bodybuilders and say, okay, you know, they're bodybuilders in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s that were doing all these steroids. And some of them are just fine. You know, um, some of them are became governor of California and had act, great acting careers. And, you know, they're fine and they're well into their 70s. Others weren't so fine. Some of them had heart attacks. Some of them had roid rage issues. There's a whole myriad of issues. And then, until enough of this stuff happens, until it's gone on and enough people have been engaged using these things, we really don't know how someone's going to be affected. That's how you know clinical trials work is that they start out with a few people and then they add a few more people and see that it's working. And then they put a whole bunch of people through. And when I say a whole bunch, we're talking tens of thousands. And then from that, they start gathering information. Is this safe? Will this kill you? Um, and then that's where you get that whole legal mumbo jumbo at the end of an ad for uh, the purple pill or whatever is because this is, you know, X number of people had this problem. X number of people committed suicide or had thoughts of suicide. X number of people had that problem. So how you're going to be affected by a potential chemical, a thing that you're putting in your body, in this case, it happens to be an amino acid. Uh, so it sounds benign, but steroids seemed kind of benign when they first started using them. And sometimes they're just not. And especially when you start getting into things like growth hormone, uh, because there are things we, we, we don't mind growing. We don't mind growing back muscle and bone and those types of things, but there's things we don't want growing like cancer. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that peptides cause cancer or that peptides could promote cancer. I'm just saying that when you go to these places online and you go to order it and you receive it, I'm going to tell you right now, they'll tell you it's not for human consumption. It's for testing purposes. And for the most part, it should be animal testing. I think we're past the animal testing stage at this point with peptides because I was hearing about peptides five, six years ago. So there's a lot more known about them now than there was then but you still want to be working with a medical professional. So whether you're working with Dr. Spar at Vault Health or you find someone else that you want to work with on these, it's important for you to work with a doctor. Make sure you're getting these things from a reputable compounding pharmacy uh, and just, you know, play it safe. You know, we all want to get better, but I can tell you there, there is no magic pill. These things can help, but there is no magic pill. Oh, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Peptides sound really intriguing. It sounds like a, another interesting supplement that's worth trying. And and as he had mentioned about um, some already existing that are tailored for improving immune function, that sounds wonderful. But I have to agree that with any supplementation, it's always best to have the supervision of a doctor. And it's not even the known side effects. There's also unknown side effects. And you just don't know how you as an individual patient are going to react. So that's why it's best to have a doctor keeping an eye on you as you try something new. But yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this plays out maybe in another couple of years as they get better with the science and and use of it. 
Yeah, and and that's what's happening right now. You've got you've got doctors in a clinical setting, or you have doctors like uh, with Vault Health that are they'll get on the phone with you. They'll do blood tests where they need to do blood tests. Uh, they'll listen to what your health history is and, and and other things that you're going through, and then they'll be able to prescribe something that is appropriate to you. You'll then receive it, knowing you can trust what you're getting. You can try it. But like with everything, you know, somebody will try a medicine and it doesn't work. And mm-hmm. so the doctor will say, well, let's change the prescription and try it this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to be no different than that. You're just basically trying a peptide rather than a medicine. But that's not to say there's not some negative effects to using peptides. Oh, for sure. And, you know, as as we do get older, these little things crop up and it's, you know, you just need to make sure you're not trading one set of problems for another set of problems with these different supplementation peptides or anything else. And again, I still refer to the experts who might know you a little better as a patient and what you can tolerate and, and uh, can they can just keep an eye on you as you try these things. Absolutely. So, uh, Rachel, we are rolling up on the end of the year for Thanksgiving. Um, actually, I think as we're as we're recording this, I mean, as as this is going on, I think they've already had Thanksgiving in Canada. So, I apologize, Canada, that we're a little bit late on the gun with your Thanksgiving. Uh, but you can save these recipes and use them next year. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, mm-hmm. I have I have one of my favorite recipes uh, that I want to share. Uh, it's a cranberry sauce, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go ahead and go first, Rachel. Well, I like to have biscuits with my Thanksgiving dinner, which is strange for a keto person, but I have a new recipe that we just tried recently. Mike uh, bought an air, air fryer, so we're new to the whole air fryer implement, and uh, Keto Connect has an air fryer biscuit recipe that has is based with um, almond flour and cheddar cheese and sour cream, and it was really easy to put together and really easy to use in an air fryer. But if you don't have an air fryer, I've got another recipe that is based with mostly cheese and a little bit of almond flour. Um, it includes cheddar cheese, mozzarella, parmesan, and sour cream. And um, with a little bit of almond flour. And that one I baked in some muffin tins and they came out great. Um, Even my family who are non-keto really enjoy these uh, biscuits as well. So I'll uh, send you these recipes so that you can post them in your show notes. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So on to cranberry sauce. To me, Thanksgiving isn't Thanksgiving without a turkey and without cranberry sauce. I, I can do without the stuffing. Uh, I can even do without the, the the mashed potatoes or cauliflower mash as we did last week, or even without the biscuits. But uh, I I want the cranberry sauce and I want the uh, turkey. They just it's hand and glove. I can't have perfect one without combination. The other. <laughs> yes. And so here's here's my basic thing. Okay, cranberry sauce has everybody's gonna have a kind of a different feel for how they want their cranberry sauce. You can buy the cranberry sauce that's mostly berries and very little gelatin, and you can buy some that are just about practically just gelatin, okay? So you're gonna wanna play with this a little bit to get it to the texture that you want. So I'm, I'm gonna talk in my terms of the texture I like, which is more of the whole berries, more berries, okay? You basically want to buy a bag of the cranberries, you know, say sell them in a 12 ounce bag. It's pretty easy. Just rinse them off, put them in a, uh, put a, get a saucepan going of, of a water, about a cup of water. And then you're going to want to put um, about, uh, put a packet of, of uh, gelatin in there. So if you like a little bit of gelatin, you can make it a little gelatiny. And so up to a packet, okay, with no more than that, get the water boiling and then drop the berries in there. Now, the berries will go anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, at 10 minutes is about the time they start to pop, and that's what you want. You want the berries popped. For me, by the time they get to 15, it's mush. So okay. now we're just doing the jelly kind. So I'm going to be airing on the side of 10 minutes. It's in there boiling, and I'm stirring, and then, you know, there you go. Once I get it just about to where to point, so the cranberries are just popping for me, for you, if you want it more gelatiny, you may put, um, you may let it go a little bit longer, but when you got about maybe just, I would say a, a minute left, you drop the chia seeds in there. Okay. And that's about oh. a quarter of a cup of chia seeds. Now what the chia seeds do is they just give it kind of a little bit of a different texture. 
Okay. And then what I start doing is I take it off the heat and I start stirring in uh, confectioner swerve. Okay. So this is an artificial sweetener. I realize, you know, sometimes you want something you, you, you're not going to want the cranberry sauce without the sweet to back it up. It's not just telling you right mm-hmm. now. So you start putting in the swerve. Now I try to stay closer to like half a cup, but you can go up to as much as three quarters of a cup with, uh, with the confectioner swerve. Okay. And so you just stir that in and, you know, like I'll stir in a little bit and then I'll taste it. And I, and then I know, okay, this is good for me. And now I need to get a little sweeter because everybody else will want to eat it. And then you stir it on in there. Now, by the time you do all this, the gelatin's going to start to be mixed in. You know, the gelatin's in there, the water's in there. Uh, your cranberries are all set. You've got the, you've got the chia seeds in there. Uh, there's one other option that I'll add, uh, and it really depends on what else we have with, uh, with dinner. But some people like walnuts, uh, crushed walnuts in there. And so you, if you want, you can add walnuts to get the te- additional texture that you want. Put it in a glass bowl and set it in the refrigerator for about an hour. And then it should set. And there you go. You've got cranberry sauce. And depending, again, if you added the nuts in there, you could have as much as eight servings. But uh, without the nuts, it's probably going to work out to around six. That sounds wonderful. I'll have to give that a try for sure. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's one of those things like with most recipes I do, they're, they're, they're a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and then you just feel it out. So I don't really have exact measurements for a lot of these things. And I apologize for that. I'm not really a recipe writer. I may <laughs> sit down at the stove and just play. And then, but, I, you know, having done some of these things over and over and over again, I, I have a general good idea about how much of stuff to put in it. But um, just play with it. If you like it a little bit more gelatiny, put more gelatin in it and let the uh, berries go longer. If you want a little bit more buried, then maybe a little less gelatin and the, don't cook the berries as long. Uh, but the, the um, chia seeds going in there and then just enough sweetener. And then, of course, uh, if you love walnuts like I do, then you put the walnuts in there, a good healthy fat to kind of round this whole thing out. Perfect. All right. So anything else uh, we need to go over, Rachel, before we call it a day? No, I'm good for today. All right. Well, Rachel, I'll see you next week. Yep. Bye now. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, I answer the question, how to get strong after 40. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.